You have to remind yourself that these people were in a desperate situation just a handful of years ago. They didn't have water. They were importing tanker trucks to feed their basic needs of water. And here they are overflowing with abundance. Brimming with water, brimming with crop diversity and prosperity. Welcome to Maharashtra, India. I was here three years ago with Dr. Avinash Pohl visiting two villages that had done very well in the Pani Foundation's Water Cup competition. And I saw the incredible work that these villages had done to solve their water problems and recharge their groundwater table. The Pani Foundation facilitated the Water Cup competition, which enabled thousands of villages to literally fix their water problems. The work of the Pani Foundation is transforming landscapes, regenerating ecosystems, regenerating water tables at a scale and a speed greater than any other project that I've seen on the planet. So three years went by and I found everybody wanted to know what's the Pani Foundation doing now? This is real. This is the living example that we can transform desperate situations into prosperity, natural abundance, health, and well-being of the creatures, the rivers, the watershed. We can do this. The last village that we visited was Savargon Tal. Ivad, thank you so much for welcoming me and my wife here. This village has reached a level of abundance in their agricultural system. Dr. Pohl, he told us before we went, he's like, oh, you better wait. This village is gonna blow your mind. Right now, we are in the down portion of the Sawargao Tal village. Uh, it's the uh, lowest portion of the village. In 2019, they took a part in the Pani Foundation's water cup and they treat whole the whole area with a scientific way and made so many water conservation structures like CCTs, deep CCTs, loose boulder structures, gabion structures, deepening and widening of the nalas, palm ponds, uh, well recharging, soap pits, and the result of is that the water table will increase a lot. Even in 300 to 400 millimeters rainfall, uh, they can survive easily because of this good treatment. Because after Pani Foundation's competitions, water level is increased a lot. Whatever the greenery which you can see, uh, it's the effect of the water conservation treatments. Nowadays, uh, the water table is so high so you can see how the deep uh, the CCT. This CCT is made uh, with a machine. Uh, this is very good structure in the water conservation technology. This can be filled five to six times in a year. Completely full. Yeah. Once this CCT gets full of water, huh, you can see the result in the downside area. The stream flow definitely increased within eight to 10 days once they fill up. This is the magic of this CCT. This is a magical world. Geography is very important while making deep CCTs. On the top portion, the sloping portion, we should not construct deep CCTs. It should be on the low line area, especially the deep CCT. You can see the grass. Huh? This grass helps to reduce the speed of the water. So then uh, water from the top area flows slowly it comes here in a deep sea cities. Huh? It percolates here, which helps to reduce the soil erosion also. Hmm. All the wells and bore wells in the downstream of this watershed are totally recharged and full now. He is the owner of this farm. He is holding near about 50 acres of his land. And this 50 acre of this land is irrigated by this uh, farm pond with a gravitation 
before making of this farm pond they don't have a facility to irrigate his farm but with this farm pond which is a plastic line one now they get a security of a water like this near about 500 farm ponds in this village when there is a rainy season due to the uh, doing the watershed treatment properly and technically good huh, the water table is increased a lot it's around 5 to 10 feet from the top so during the rainy season huh, they put the water in this pond from the well so excess water which is in the well that can be put here and store in a water tank this economy or change in the agriculture is only uh, because of the proper management of the watershed as well utilization of the water is also important you can see everywhere near about 90 to 90 percent of the people in this village use a drip sprinkler and uh, mulching huh. this is the centralized control uh, uh, water irrigation system from the farm pond the water comes here from here the numberings are given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are the plot numbers. Huh. Suppose he wants to irrigate 7 number plot. He can, he can open a cock. So 7 number plot irrigation system is started automatically. This water goes with gravitation, not using electricity. And the, all the plots are irrigated with a drip system. And this tank is used to make a slurry, a slurry of a cow dung, jaggery, cow urine. Huh? This can be mixed here and fertigate to the farm from, from one place. This helps to distribute fertilizers directly in the field and the time is also saved. The abundance of agricultural production diversity of crops in this village is rather astounding. This is really the village that for about half the day, I forgot that we were looking at a village that had a water crisis just five years ago. Because this village not only solved their water problems, they rocketed ahead their production of so many different seasonal crops, horticultural crops, and then really their milk production is like insane. And we went there as all the young men were bringing the milk jugs on their motorcycle at the end of the day and pouring it in and then seeing the level of production. One time. One take one. Take one wedge. Morning, how many yeah, Just that, I think. Morning, 4,000. We got 4,000. Wow. Good. Near about 25% of the families in this village are in milk businesses. Everywhere in this village, na, you can find a cow dung. Everywhere, where you go. And that's why the health of the soil is improved a lot in this village. It's a cycle. The soil health is very good because the, all the villagers have a, a cows and buffaloes in large numbers. They can use a cow dung and can see the maize, you can see the musk melon, marigold, watermelon. Some people have a grape garden. Some people have a pomegranates. Huh. So many things are growing now. And this village is very prosperous. This is a Sachin from this village. He having a land of 18 acres. He grow beans, tomato, marigold, musk melon, and onion. onion huh. And his onion production is very beautiful than other people. Other people is average about uh, uh, 75 quintal per acre in half. And he having uh, 100 per, uh, 200 quintal per acre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He has to pay 1 lakh rupees per acre for his fertilizers. Now he started using uh, natural elements, cow dungs, slurries of the cow, urine of the cows, and his cost is reduced. Now he spent only near about 35,000 per acre. He reduces the cost and increase the production. What does he think his secret is? What is his secret that makes him have a higher yields, even even than other organic farmers? The tulsa's secret guy, as they mean. Secret, Mr. Galdar Munshidi ko. Great, great, Mr. Galdar Munko. Neither Mr. Galdar Pune reja. The secret of his farming, he followed the nature.
nothing else. <laughs> Especially touching was our meeting with the women's group there. They had gotten together and they said to their husbands, we're forming this group for the Farmer's Cup competition. And their husbands were like, ah, you're not gonna be able to farm better than us. And the women were like, no, give us some land. So they gave them the more marginal land that they had on their farms. These women took this marginal land. They went through exactly the procedures that the Pani Foundation had taught them with the SOPs, the standard operating practices. And they followed them and they grew this onion crop. These women worked together and they actually ended up competing with their husband's onion crops and they completely dominated. Their husbands actually lost their onion crops in these unseasonable heavy rains, but because these women had followed the SOPs, their onion crops thrived. They made so much money that they completely outdid their husbands. Will they start telling the men what to do? <laughs> yeah, so now the men will say, why don't you take the good land? <laughs> <laughs> this thing happens only because we are gathered together. This seems like just the beginning. What's, what's it going to be like in three years, in five years, in ten years? An interesting thing about Savargontal village and Pemgiri is when you zoom out, you can see that those watersheds of these villages are actually adjoining on the other side of these mountains. And so you start to imagine the cumulative effect of a village restoring their 1,000 hectare, 1,600 hectare watershed, reforesting the hillsides, putting in water harvesting structures, recharging their water table, and then the next watershed over, the next village, reforesting their hillsides, putting in water harvesting structures, recharging their groundwater tra table, bringing up their prosperity, and then you start to fathom the cumulative effects of neighboring villages, hundreds of villages, thousands of villages, restoring their water tables, increasing their productivity, increasing their prosperity, increasing their well-being, increasing their resilience, sustainability, and health because they're reducing their chemical usage. And you start to think about the cumulative effects that this has on the entire region, on the entire population of a region. It lifts up the whole economy. It lifts up the whole uh, well-being of the population. We can actually have the evolution that we need on the planet. We can have a win-win for people, for nature, this is possible. So I hope that you've enjoyed the series here uh, on the Pawnee Foundation. And I am so excited to come back here in the coming years and see the next level of prosperity once even more villages go through this process and the villages that we're already seeing are farther along on this process of positive transformation. Are you ready to transform deserts, create lush backyards and feed communities? In my almost 30 years as a permaculture designer traveling the world, I've put everything I learned into Oregon State University's online permaculture design course, or PDC. The PDC and PDC Pro are the ultimate ways to begin mastering permaculture. Me and my team guide you through over 20 assignments with more than 100 hours of top quality video lectures and resources, all focused on developing your own property or project throughout the course. You'll get personalized feedback from a dedicated instructor in a small group setting. People are always asking me, how can I be part of the solution? This is your starting point. Check the link below for upcoming courses and join us in creating a better world for everyone. See you in class.